Hi. Um, so my name is Despo, and today I'll be talking about uh, CodeBar and how you can also help bridge the diversity gap in the tech industry. Um, so um, my Twitter handle is Despo, and that's my full name if you can pronounce it. Um, I really like PAGs. I thought I should just get that out of the way. <laughs> Um, and I uh, normally work as a Ruby developer. So about a year ago, um, I started running CodeBar uh, on my free time. So essentially, I started um, running workshops every week in different venues. Um, got like developers um, participating in the workshops in an effort to help out and um, and open them up to women, LGBT, and other minorities that are not that are underrepresented in the industry. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> okay. So, um, so our goal obviously is to try and change the numbers in the in the industry, right? So we try to do that by running weekly workshops, by offering a friendly and encouraging environment where people can come to learn without being afraid of, um, you know, of not being good enough or not being able to, you know, become hardcore programmers within two days. Uh, we try to encourage everybody to participate. And as I said, our goal is to just eliminate the fear of programming. <clears throat> so our goal is to create a more inclusive um, tech community. We want to give people the skills and the confidence to be able to go out there and try to get jobs. We want to create informal networking opportunities um, and mostly to strengthen the diversity of the, of the industry. <clears throat> So we started running workshops in London about a year ago in October. Um, at the first workshop, we had around 16 people. It was all word of mouth, so we mostly had people who were in the tech industry one way or another, maybe not in programming roles, but by doing other uh, jobs, uh, other relevant jobs. Um, so within two months, we went from having 16 people attending to 40. Obviously, this includes not just the students, but also the coaches, because we try to have a ratio of um, one to two, so for every two students, we try to have a developer available that can sort of help and guide them through the tutorials. Um, in May, we started running workshops in Brighton. Uh, they take place every two weeks. And about two weeks ago, we started running workshops in Cambridge. So the Brighton and the Cambridge workshops are a bit smaller. In Brighton, we get around 30 people, and in Cambridge, like 10 people. But you know, we don't have any marketing, so um, I think if even uh, reaching 30 people in Brighton was not something that we anticipated. We were expecting to have maybe 10, 15 people at the most. Um, so this is like at our second workshop. Um, unfortunately, this is one of the venues that we are unable to use anymore because of the limited space. <clears throat> so at the moment, we have around 50 people um, attending each week, out of which around 35 are the students um, and the remaining are coaches. Uh, we are trying to prepare um, like West London workshops. Obviously, we always need more people to be involved so they can help organize more venues, more food. Um, but you know, I think that's a small problem to deal with in, in order to be able to um, just help more people and not just the ones living in East London. Um, and in October, we'll be doing the Brighton workshops weekly uh, due to demand. Um, okay, so. Um, I think I'm repeating myself a bit with the number of students, but in London so far we've run 46 workshops. Um, I think it's quite an achievement that we've went from 16 to 50 people because when we started we just never expected to, to get anywhere close to this number. Um, and now our biggest issue is finding venue space, um, venues who can also provide food because that can be quite hard. Codebar is quite, it's, it's run mostly on my free time. There are other people who help a bit, but we don't have any structure. Um, it's all volunteer. Um, and in Brighton, we've so far done 10 workshops and have around 30 students and coaches attending every week. So uh, I suppose you, you are all aware about the massive diversity issue in the industry. Um, less than 20% of people um, in tech are women. Even less than that are developers. Um, and a much less um, lower percentage are black, LGBT, or part of other minorities. I mean, I think you can, you know, have a look around you and see, <laughs> um, you know, the, the problem really. Um, so, 
part of the reason why we want to change this is because you know ultimately technology affects how we all live our everyday lives so being able to to have an input and hear different perspectives means we can make things better um, and ultimately it also means that companies will be able to shape their products for wider markets um, which I suppose is what most people are interested in um, our students come from a variety of backgrounds we have university graduates non-university graduates designers moms really whatever you can think of uh, we have people who just want to understand what programming is because they hear so much about it but they don't really get it um, others just want to learn a couple of things just for fun um, we have students who want to be developers and, and this for us is a way to also help them and give them guidance in moving into those roles um, some people just want to create their own products and learn how to make things on their own um, so the workshops in our workshops we usually spend the first half an hour having food and just socializing we try to pair one two students with a coach so that they can get direct assistance and feedback you know a lot of people are just not comfortable in asking questions they always think that they're the ones in the room who are just not good enough to get there so this way just makes it I think easier for everybody to move forward um, we have some tutorials the tutorials um, are mostly friendly for beginners but um, what we try to do as well is to, co to have like one coach with stu two students so we can have at the same session people who are more advanced, people who are just starting um, working through whatever tutorial they want or just getting advice on other things that they're interested in. You know, we have students who want to do more um, data analysis or are looking for jobs and don't know how to get started. People who also finished like academies, you know, paid like for three month courses and then weren't able to um, I'm not saying that in a negative way, I'm just saying though that we just need to provide more support for the people out there, right? Um, <coughs> um, so our tutorials, they become progressively advanced. They, um, so far they only go through HTML, JavaScript and Ruby. We do usually direct the new people at the HTML tutorials because it's just an easier way of getting something out there you know, being able to get feedback um, and move forward. But from there on, we are always open to whatever the students are interested in learning. You know, some people just want and want to do JavaScript. They don't care about HTML. That's fine by us if they can move forward. Um, our goal is to build knowledge and not to solve specific problems. So in general, we try to discourage people who come with their project, a very specific problem, and just need somebody to help them get through it. We're not there to build anyone's product, but to give them the skills to do it on their own. Um, and as part of the tutorials, we do aim to get students building things. So the tutorials are quite basic. They try to explain concepts, give some background information, show examples, and ultimately get the students working on things. Um, for example, like in one of the JavaScript tutorials, people build a color picker. Um, um, or interact with BBC's API, you know, just to see what they can actually achieve. Um, but yeah, we don't only run workshops. We also try to run one day courses. Some of them we've already run, um, some we are planning to run. We hope that by being able to offer, you know, uh, more like specialized knowledge to people that will help them move forward because again, it's so much easier to have developers coming from every background in the workshops every week but for the courses we can have an expert presenting things to people so um, I suppose for us you know this is the way that we are able to to do more to give back <coughs> yeah I know but again because we do have this big diversity issue in the industry we think that helping people be more comfortable in speaking in front of others is also very important because I am a very uncomfortable speaker as well and I'm, you know, I'm usually really struggling to, to stand in front of people and I think there's a lot of value in it because unfortunately unless you have the people who can go out there you know be loud and speak to others about the issues then we just can't make the progress we want and I think uh, that's it um, I suppose it goes a bit with self-presentation and being able to get a job as well because of the aggressiveness of the industry too so um, 
I mean, you know, we are always uh, open to opinions and ideas as well about the tutorials. So if, if you have anything, you know, feel free to email me or speak to me about it afterwards. Um, so obviously, you know, I'm, I'm o I only have good things to say about Codebar um, since I started it and, you know, I spend a lot of my personal time on it. So I'll just read some of the feedback that we got back from students. Um, you know, obviously, yeah, it's not all um, extremely positive. We do get feedback about, you know, how we can help people, you know, integrate better or, or get started, how to guide the coaches. Uh, because for us, code, but you know, it's not something that it's out there and it's perfect and it's just happening. We want to make sure that the people are actively involved in helping shape what we do as well. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants to read more feedback, like um, you're more than welcome to ask me, and I'll give you access. So um, I really enjoy the workshops. I think it's brilliant that the organizers and the coaches are taking their free time to help others. It really helps me a lot, and it's fun to attend. A great place to meet other people too. The tutorials are easy explained, and I feel I'm learning a lot. Um, really good. No question was too simple to ask, and I think I really got to grips with the module. It was really friendly and fun, but I also learned a lot. Uh, John answered most of my questions, and whilst we didn't strictly follow the tutorial or even complete it, I feel like he gave me some great insight in getting into the mindset of a programmer. Um, yeah, first time at Codebar and loved it. We'll definitely be coming back regularly. Great, supportive environment, and Tom was really fantastic, very patient, and explained problems in a very clear way. Um, I had a great time and had lots of one-to-one -one help with my project. My coach was able to give me some new approaches to try, and we made some progress to implementing this. I'll definitely hope to make it um, along again. Thanks for organizing. So, um, to to be able to manage to uh, have Codebar going on for so long, we've had like a lot of great companies who have been helping us out by offering us either their venue or food um, or both. Um, just as a small, you know, thank you. I suppose, you know, if you are able to help us, then we'll also put your logo there. That's one of the little things that we can do to give back. Um, but yeah, as I said, we still face a lot of challenges despite um, of being able to keep the workshops going so far. So trying to get weekly space and food is not, you know, it's not as easy. We do, there are different organizers in Brighton and in Cambridge, but everybody is employed full time. Um, and it's something that we actively need to do all the time. There is, there is no end to this. Finding coaches with free time. Um, I mean, actually in London, um, I think for the last month, we've been extremely lucky to have like a waiting list of coaches as well, but you know, things, change we are on every week we are trying to roll out West London as well so if you could sign up and just come along to one workshop it will help everybody a lot I think it will also give you a better perspective of things um, and trying to get enough funding to keep things going so it cost us around eight grand to run workshops in London every week for a year um, and in in Brighton and Cambridge it costs even less I think it's about four to five K simply because uh, finding venues there is not as easy as London, so the costs are slightly different. <coughs> um, so ways that you could help us out uh, are you can come and coach at our workshops, you can suggest or write a tutorial, improve the existing tutorials, everything is open source and in GitHub, and you know, we always like taking on suggestions and ideas. You can run a course if there is something that you feel really comfortable with and that you think could benefit others. You know, it could be something like a UX um, course or responsive and mobile design, for example. Um, obviously, everything we offer is completely free. We, we have like a five pound charge for the courses simply to make sure that people attend rather than to make any profit and everything goes back to Codebar. Um, you could also help out by spreading the word, talking to other developers about what we do. Um, try to get them to attend if you can't. You can speak to your boss um, and maybe help us by sponsoring one of our workshops. Um, that costs around 180 pounds at the moment. Uh, so it's, it's all for food mostly. Um, and to encourage your friends to try programming. You know, it's, it's important. A lot of people out there, they just don't see programming as an option for them. And sometimes it takes for them to be dragged along by somebody else or I don't know. Um, just to come for, for no reason, to realize that actually this is something that they could see themselves doing in a, in a couple of years. 
Um, again, you can help us by donating to Code Bar and GitHub, even though hopefully we'll be away, move away soon. Um, and yeah, you can read more on codebar.io and sign up as a coach or as a student. You know, encourage your friends, your female friends, your partners to just sign up and attend once. You know, there is no commitment for them either. Um, and I think, yeah, I've just seen so many people come just to try it out who are more interested uh, that it's worth it. Um, everything, all of our resources are on GitHub and we are Codebar HQ on Twitter. And that's it. <laughs> Sponsor list looked impressive. Uh, I didn't hear anything about government sponsorship. It seems like a topical area that, that the government would be interested in sponsoring. Yeah, so, so um, I work, right? And I started Codebar as something that was running once a week. To be honest, I've not really had the time to invest in anything like that. I do have people who are trying to help me more. I've hired a PA last week who will be doing something like four hours for us and will be funded by the GitHub money that we've been gathering for six months. So I am hoping to put a bit more structure. But so far, uh, yeah, I suppose you need the right person to do the right thing. I'm from first a developer and then a business on, or an entrepreneur. We are completely unfunded and haven't really seeked any funding so far. Come talk to me afterwards about grants. I run a code club for kids um, and there's money out there. You just gotta deal with paperwork. Yeah, uh, it was interesting because I haven't looked at the feedback like for a couple of weeks as well and I had a couple of students who gave me uh, links for applying for funding programs. However, you know, I still think, you know, I mean maybe we can get funding for the food but I still find that having like the venues, having the companies actively involved also, it just makes, it, it changes things, it changes their perspective. You know, I remember talking to some of the sponsors at some point and asking, you know, are you hiring? Maybe you would be interested in getting like an intern or a junior or somebody from Code Bar. And, you know, for me hearing things like, oh, you know, but we want the best, um, was quite disheartening. But I, I find that that's an approach that has started to change because they do have their developers more involved. That makes a lot of sense. I, just, I think it's more of a, an and situation, you know, there's no reason why you can't, it, oh, yeah, it, yeah, as yeah, long no, as the course. paperwork isn't overly, you know, mm -hmm. it takes too much time because I think... Of course, I mean, I, w I would love to speak to you about it. This is something that I'm trying to, um, you know, now that I quit my job and have all the free time in the world, I can sort <laughs> things out, so yeah. Cool. So you said you don't do any marketing. Um, how have you found that people have found Codebar? How have, you, have they discovered Codebar? So uh, by being a, being a developer uh, meant that I had people that I could try and drag along at the first couple of workshops that told other people that told other people Tolkien and Brighton Ruby, where, uh, we, where we uh, met again. Um, again, like a couple of small talks here and there. Rosa, uh, so the, um, the organizer in Brighton is a person who started by attending as a student back in November last year. Um, and like in three months, she applied, got an apprenticeship. She's now working as a developer and is also running the Brighton chapter. She has been amazing uh, by doing public talks definitely like a much better work than me. But I think, you know, that's the difference also of helping people with things like public speaking, encouraging them and pushing them a bit to just get out there. Because it is a hard industry, right? And you just need to deal with some things. But yeah, it's, it's uh, all word of mouth, right? No marketing. Actually, it would be great if we could get some marketing money because I think we, you know, at the beginning, it was mostly women who work in marketing in a tech company or some other role in a tech company, and that's okay. But imagine like how many more people we could reach out to. By the way, I think you're a good speaker for this. I think you, you, uh, today you, I haven't been very stressed. I don't know why, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Do you see Copa growing across the country, or? I think it would be great if there are smaller, like local chapters, because ultimately London is like the land of opportunity. Um, you know, I mean, my husband is like from Scotland, for a bit, from like a small town, for example the opportunities in, in that place are like completely non-existent, for example, if I could. But see, the problem is you just need to find the developers. If you don't have the developers, then um, I've met so many people who started things like that, but because they didn't know the developers, it just went nowhere. You know, they tried for a couple of weeks and then... So I do hope to do that, but um, I, at the moment we definitely don't have, like, I think the marketing outreach that we should in order to achieve this. So how did the one in Cambridge start up? Uh, Cambridge, um, 
It was through uh, an email I sent to Ada's List. So Ada's List is an all women in technology list. Um, and some women got interested. And Brighton, it was uh, yeah, a coach and a student from London. <coughs> Can I just have a quick show of hands of who in the room is thinking now about signing up to be a coach? Okay, good. All right. Thank you. Massive round of applause.